Um, so then the last part we'll try to squeeze in here at the bottom is let's look at the uh, let's look at the homogeneous solution. So the homogeneous solution is going to be the same thing. I'll just rewrite it, but it's d dr times r d t h dr minus two h bar over k thickness r t h is equal to zero. Um, okay, so this one uh, you probably are going to have to go look at a table or plug it into Maple, or maybe you're smart enough to look at this and just see what the solution is. Um, but this we need to we need to find some way of getting to this. Let me look back at there's a few slides back now. We had that table. I think it was where did that go? Here it was. So if we look at this table. Our job is to pattern match. Find the pattern that matches what we have. So we have a derivative of r times dt dr minus some constant times r times th, right? So this is the one that we have. Um, hopefully you can see that. Like then there's these like subtle variants. So if you have r squared, it's a different equation. If it's plus, it's a different equation. And so on, but I think if we match everything up, we should end up with with equation number five here, and this now involves these Bessel functions. So how many of you, by the way, have heard of a Bessel function before? Like half ish. Okay. So don't worry too much about a Bessel function or what it is, except to know that it's something like <clears throat> like a sine or cosine uh, or sinh or cosh. It's some function that's been defined by a very smart mathematician at some point in time for something they needed, right? It's, it's uh, maybe a property of some equations or a solution to some equations, but it's a, a purpose-built function for, for applications. We can use it because it has some nice properties. Um, it's all the, the first, second, third derivatives are all defined in terms of Bessel functions. Um, th there's certain ones that oscillate, so you can have multiple solutions. So there's these features of it that are nice for, for our purposes. <clears throat> and in fact, you know, these are equations that specifically solve this, these sets of ODEs, which commonly appear in, in uh, heat transfer. OK, so we take our solution. We'll go back, um, let's see if I can get this to work. We'll go back here. All right, so we have now decided that it's a Bessel function. Um, I want to show you this mess uh, with, with one thing in mind, and that is, okay, let's say for some reason you're um, on a desert island and you have no computer, but you need to solve a Bessel function. Okay, You can now go through this chart and figure out which Bessel function you need. All right? uh, otherwise, you can just use maple. But it's good, I think, to understand some of the rules. So there's these general, this general... Um, form of the equation up here. Uh, this guy up here. So if you ever see an equation that looks like, you know, derivative of the independent variable to some power times the derivative of the uh, dependent variable plus or minus c squared x to some power times temperature, right? That's a Bessel function. This is a family of functions. And then based on like the values of the exponent you can go through and decide, all right, um, does s minus p plus 2, does that equal 0 or not? If it doesn't, then we go this way. You calculate these secondary parameters based on the powers. And then if, uh, what, if the last term is negative, that is that you know, plus or minus c squared, if that's negative, then you end up with this, which is where we are. Um, if it's positive, you do something else. And then you have these, these different types of functions, um, Bessel i, Bessel j, uh, Bessel k, Bessel y. Right? And these all, these all have names. Okay? Um, I don't know how important it is for you to remember them, but it's things like Bessel function of the first kind, second order, and so on. Right? Um, so this is just how you would go through determining, or you know, how an, a computer program goes through and determines which function to actually use. Um, 
So this you can keep for your reference and just look at the example. What we did in, in our problem here is figured out, you know, based on going through those computations, we end up, like I said, down here. Okay. Um, one more thing on Bessel functions. Can't really read this, but um, what this what this slide is giving you is if you want to know the derivative of Bessel i, let's say Bessel i of the uh, the first kind, that the, it's given here. So it's Bessel i of the second kind times the derivative of the argument, right? So this is just a table that you can use to evaluate derivatives if you don't have um, a computer handy. If you actually plot out these functions, you can see they have some kind of interesting behavior. So like Bessel function of the first kind, uh, zero, zeroth order, first order, second order, the, these functions show up here. Um, Bessel function of the second kind and so on. So you can get kind of an understanding of what it is that the function's doing. So it has some like convergence to it, but it's also oscillating um, depending on you know, the kind of the function. So, all right, not too much interesting there to, to talk about. So let's get back to our example here and finish this off. Um, looks like I have already written out for you the solution. So we went through, we found our particular solution, we've now found our homogeneous solution, add them back together, and we get uh, temperature expression in terms of these Bessel functions. By the way, if you, you know, type the uh, Bessel function in E's, they're programmed in there. Um, I believe you might need either the math or NumPy library for Bessel functions and, and Python. Um, not entirely sure on that, but I'll double check that. Um, but they're programmed in most software. Right? Uh, the derivative is given there, so now we can go through and compute the heat transfer to the fin, which we would do it, um, as shown there, enforce the boundary conditions, and get back maybe some fin efficiency or something like that. Right? So, so that's that example. Um, let me just show you how this is programmed into ease. Um, well, first of all, if we wanted to do the same evaluation in Maple, we would do it like this. So we'd say, here's our, our ODE. It's R dt dr uh, minus this constant, which we're calling m squared, R T R, And then the stuff on the right-hand side is exactly what we had before. We're just saying our constant m squared is equal to the stuff multiplying our temperatures. We solve this, and we get back our, here's our homogeneous solution here. And then this is the particular solution that we had. Uh, we're evaluating this for the boundary conditions. I guess we had a temperature boundary condition, and then we have a heat flux boundary condition. And we have our three sets of e our three equations uh, with three unknowns that we can then solve the problem. All right, so you take this, we copy it, and we go to ease and implement it. Um, so let's see. Here's the solution that we would have done by hand if we went through that chart. Um, here's the solution that we get from copying it from Maple, so they should give us the same thing. And then you could, you know, compute heat transfer to the fin, the fin efficiency. Um, and then there's actually a programmed fin efficiency in E is called eta fin annular rectangular. So if we looked, uh, let me just so do this. So uh, was it calculate? Sorry, options. Sorry, somebody's got to help me. It's always, I always hit uh, Control Alt F and I forget where it actually is. Options, function info. Thank you. All right. Do I teach this class or not? Um, and then we go to heat transfer fluid flow. Uh, what? It's fin efficiency right here. And you can tell it dimensional or non dimensional. Right? This is known base temperature TB. And you could probably look at the information, and it'll tell you uh, what the requirements are, right? Uh, and then probably adiabatic tip. And then you can just toggle through and find it. So this one is programmed in here, right here. So we could just double check and make sure we got, <clears throat> got the, right, the right fin efficiency. So hopefully this solves. And yeah, so this particular one with, with values input gives us a 85% fin efficiency, which fine, okay. Okay, questions on that example? Okay. It's the kind of thing that, yeah, we go through it kind of fast, but um, 
probably where it will be useful is just to look back at it when you're trying to do your homework. So, OK, let's go back to our slides. Um, all right, so that kind of wraps up our extended surfaces discussion. We've done an example where we have a fin array. We've got have this example where we have a radial coordinate system. Uh, we, we did, um, you know, went through a couple different things. So hopefully you have some tools here that you can use to, to solve homework problems and really understand these uh, moving forward.